So what I'm asking all of you to do today, and you know the reasons that I'm asking you to do this, is think about whether or not it is the case that right now you are a little bit more active than you might have been at the start of lockdown, and to ask yourself why that is the case. Was your journey really essential? You might think it's only you making an extra journey and that it's only one trip. And you might well feel you deserve it after weeks of restraint. Believe me, I really understand all of that. But all of it adds up. And the fact remains that if everybody starts easing off... I'll be exposed as a liar. As will Boris Johnson. As will the mainstream media. As will every other politician that's continuing this fear porn campaign that we're seeing here. COVID-19 is really not that different to the flu. It has to be said. The death rates, the symptoms and so on and so forth. And we've gone well past the point now of flattening said curve. And now it's about staying indoors to prevent a second so-called wave. You know? So long gone are the days of flattening the curve. That's been and gone. And now it's all about preventing a second wave. What will the next excuse be? But let's just use an element of common sense here. Because you don't need to be a man that wears a tinfoil hat or some Fruit Loop to understand that there is something quite wrong with this bollocks that has been portrayed as reality right in front of you. Let's just use some common sense for a split second. So, if you go out for what's classified as an essential journey to a shopping centre, uh, sh supermarket, sorry, or to take your dog for a walk or your allocated hour of exercise, quote unquote, you know, that's somehow deemed more important than going out for whatever other reason, such as driving your car or going out twice a day or whatever it may be. You could quite as easy, you could just as easily pick up said virus if it was floating around out there on your essential journey as you could if you were going out on a journey that's not classified as essential. And for the people that have been classified as key workers, essential workers, you know, they could quite easily pass around the virus amongst themselves just as much as we would if we were out on our non-essential journeys. Just because we're staying indoors, all of that so-called good work that we're supposedly doing by uh, staying indoors could quite easily be reversed, could quite easily be obliterated and deemed meaningless and pointless by people passing it around outside that are deemed essential workers. There's your common sense argument, but it just seems to go over everybody's head here. This is fucking ridiculous. It's getting ridiculous at this point now. I am sick of the SNP, especially taking the credit. It's funny and it's embarrassing, all in a wonder. You know, on the one hand, Nicola Thunlops get, gets criticism. And then all her little fanboys, her cult men, uh, members with their cult mentality, will run to her defence and say, oh, well, she's hindered, she can't do anything because Boris Johnson has more control, yada yada. And in the next breath, she gets bummed up to high heaven for this, this wonderful job she's supposedly doing. Yet all she does is repeats what Boris Johnson says. You can't have a both ways. You cannot say that she's doing a great job if she can't do anything because she's hindered by Boris Johnson. When she's doing the same thing as Boris Johnson because she mimics what he says. You criticise Boris Johnson, you criticise the Tory party, you criticise Westminster full st uh, non-stop, but yet you praise Nicola Sturgeon. This <laughs> getting stupid. Anyway... The virus will quickly take off again and it will uh, so they say will have devastating consequences oh, well, for I, all of us. How do we I know, know that? Because you can't help but flub the statistics, thin lips. This is a long haul. I know people want to travel a bit more. Don't fucking patronise me. I know that children want to spend more time outside. I absolutely know that every grandparent watching this right now and the kid can start against the law. is desperate to see and to hug their grandchildren. But as things stand, our progress again... Our progress. Our progress. Let's talk about our progress, shall we? When this thing first started, take your mind back to when it first kicked off. The borders from wide open, and they're still wide open, right? But when the outbreak took root in England, there was barely any in Scotland. And yes, granted, there was cases that started in Scotland around about the same time, but the majority of the outbreak has been in England. But there was none in the Highlands. We've been in lockdown for two months. Now, uh, supposedly anyway, there is now more and more and more cases in the Highlands. So explain to me how, if we're all in lockdown, there's now an outbreak in the Highlands. When we've been in lockdown, there shouldn't have been. If your progress, if this so-called progress that the SNP are embarking on here, this joke, <laughs> you know, this joke of a progress, then this shouldn't be occurring. 
So then two questions arise. Is it the fact that the people that are deemed essential workers, is it them that have brought it to the Highlands? Or is it because the borders are open? Either way, it doesn't matter which one you think it is, it kind of defeats the purpose of the rest of us staying indoors. Yes, you could argue that us staying indoors will reduce the amount of people that get infected, quote unquote. But they've had a bit of a hiccup in that department because they can't keep up with their stories. Because in the one breath, the majority of people, if they've not already had it, had it, sorry, will get it and they will be asymptomatic. If that is the case, it defeats the argument of everybody having to stay indoors to prevent everybody getting it. <laughs> you know? But what progress? All you've done is told us to stay indoors, but there's still people floating about outside who could quite easily pass around this virus amongst themselves and spread it. You've made no progress. The only so-called progress that I see this going on here is actions taken by Westminster, majority of them questionable, you parting said uh, actions and pretending that you've come up with them yourself and the SNP taking the credit. It's remarkable to me that the SNP can get away with standing there and making out that they've made progress. It's them, it's, it's them taking the initiative. Let's just remember here, folks, that the flu and whatnot kind of dies out around about this time. But they're going to take the credit for it. Of course they fucking are. But the borders are still open. Why is that? Why is the Highlands now seen an outbreak? <laughs> what happened to flattening the curve? Against the virus albeit very real progress, is too fragile for us to let up. So, of course, she's warned Scotland today, in fact, the 2nd of May, uh, warned Scotland has not yet passed coronavirus danger. The Courier revealed on Thursday that the Rainbow Unicorn government feared Boris Johnson's statements about being past the peak of the disease, uh, as they could jeopardise the lockdown's effectiveness. We don't even know that the lockdown has been in any way effective. Because on the one hand, we're being told that people that are indoors could just as easily get infected or it's spreading amongst people in households just as much as it's spreading outside. And on, on another note, actually, have you not noticed that we don't ever hear about the number of recoveries? No, 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 no. We just hear about the deaths. Why is that? Finn Lips told the Daily Briefing she remains wary of sending the wrong message to a public desperate for positive news. <laughs> Right, aye, oh, okay. Thin Lips said, I've been asking today, I've been asked today if I believe that we're past the peak of this virus, and I've hesitated to use that language, of course you have, but you've been very concise in your handpick language, haven't you? The reason I've hesitated to use it is that I think perhaps it sends the message that we're past the danger point, and we're not past the danger point of this virus running out of control yet. How are we not past said danger point? We've passed said peak, we've uh, begun to flatten the curve, and it was never about preventing deaths full stop. The idea of flattening the curve was to allow the NHS to be able to cope, supposedly. Not about preventing deaths full stop, because you've made it clear from day dot that deaths are going to occur. You also made it clear from day dot that about 75% of Scotland were going to get infected. So, going by your own fear porn and logic, if you can call it that, <laughs> You've well overestimated the amount of people that have been infected, and you've overestimated the amount of people that are going to die or have died. So, <laughs> whatever. She added, though, light at the end of the tunnel was there, is there, and we only, um, we'll only keep it there if we keep doing the things that we're being, we're asking people to do. Early in the briefing, Thin Lips this declined to criticise the Prime Minister who has been accused of being too optimistic in his views of the virus. She said, what I'm choosing to say to people, and, and it's not trying to extinguish the positive, I'm desperate for positive news as much as everybody is, and it's about how we protect the positive news and building it. Oh, shut the fuck up, I can't take her garbage. She tweeted later on, there was progress in light at the end of the tunnel, sorry. My concern about the past the peak, be, um, saying past the peak is that it could imply we're past the point of danger. Well, then she says in another article here, if I can find it, I think it's this one. Uh, Miss Sturgeon was speaking amid claims that the government had shifted its language on one of the key five tests that is outlined for getting to a position where the lockdown could be eased. After stating adjustments to present rules should not risk a second peak of infections, the government said changes should avoid a second peak that overwhelms the NHS. Asked whether the government has shifted its language, Thin Lips said it is necessary to have an objective, to have as an objective not overwhelming the NHS. That was the original objective. That was what flattening the curve was all about, quote unquote flattening the curve. I don't say that as somebody that buys into it, full stop. I'm just repeating what they said. Uh, but not sufficient to have that as your only objective. Because if you take the situation in Scotland right now, and this will be similar across the UK, we had the numbers of people in intensive care around just over 100, but we've got a capacity in intensive care of nearly 600. So if your only objective was not overwhelming the NHS, that was the original objective. 
that was what this was about. So they're shifting the goalposts. So my question is, how many more times are they going to shift the goalposts before people start to question the validity of the shit that spews out of Stenlitz's mouth? Peace.